This week on Still Kiwis and Characters, we uncover more New Zealanders and some close to being New Zealanders as we travel across the US in search of proud Kiwis flying the motorsports flag once again. Last week I was on the Pacific Coast near Los Angeles and now I've travelled back to the Midwest to open this week's show with two brothers from New Plymouth who feature very strongly in the IZOD IndyCar series. It's a famous saying, the road to Indy. What was your road to Indy? Um, I actually just got in the door knowing a guy from New Plymouth that was working for a Tony Bettenhausen. And I just came over for a summer working in hospitality actually, just busting tables and helping load up and set up a tent and stuff and then uh, managed to work, work my way into working on the car. Did you actually want to work on the cars when you came over? Were you a mechanic intending to be a mechanic over here? No, I was actually did a carpentry apprenticeship back home and then just grew up around dad racing dirt track stuff and you know, working on the shop down there. Came here in 2002 when Scott came from Pac West, lucky enough to be able to sort of tag along on him and been here with him since. So you've stayed with Scott through his career over here as well? Yeah, I've actually been with him since um, the end of 98 when he first came and tested with Pac West, or Johansson actually. So yeah, it's worked out good. Now we hear a lot about driver fitness as well. I've been watching you guys throwing wheels around. There's a lot of mechanic fitness involved as well. How do you keep fit for this? Um, well, we actually have a trainer at the shop that, that's there five days a week and it's compulsory for us to work out every morning. So we have a you know, workout routine that they make us go through every day and it's pretty serious, you know, you get in trouble if you're late for it. And when you're working in this heat all the time, the fatigue and stuff and not being able to do your job properly when you get tired is a big thing. So they work on the fitness being an important part of it. Well, you've got your own sprint car as well, is that where you get your kicks? Yeah, I mean, that's where I grew up around dirt track stuff back in uh, New Plymouth or around Stratford Speedway and Ferndean. And, um, watching my dad and my uncles in that race, so always loved it, so had an opportunity to get a car before I got married, so I took it, and um, you know, not very often, that's kind of what hurts you a little bit, is racing once and then having to go, go away for a month or so and then getting back to it, so. But every opportunity I can, I sort of get to the dirt track. And You've been with Scott for a long time, obviously. Is he good to work with? Yeah, he's good, he's pretty laid back and pretty quiet and sort of keeps himself, and, and that's good, you know. The results come, and that's the important part, so. Now your aims for the future, what do you want to do? We've heard that maybe Anton would like to run his own team. Could you see two Julian teams in, in IndyCar? No, I don't think that I need all that stress of running your own team, but I'm happy doing what I'm doing right here at the moment. Um, you know, we just sort of see how it plays out. And I don't need to be working uh, more than what I'm working now sort of thing. I'm, I'm happy to have a bit of a life outside of work as well. So um, you just sort of keep going the way it is and see, see where it goes. Do you see your future in Indianapolis or in America at least, or do you see a future back in New Zealand? I don't know. I keep trying to think about how I can get home or do I want to get home. Uh, I see a bunch of people leave the race teams and then go and try their own stuff and then they end up coming back. So it's obviously hard to make good money outside of this and we get looked after pretty well. And um, I guess it's all a bit of a compromise of what you want to earn to how you want to live your life. So big compromise of your your life outside of work as well it's pretty hard to do a lot of stuff that you'd like to do it's pretty rewarding when you run good and get some good results and um, yeah we're all pretty competitive guys so it's, um, that's the environment that we need to be in I guess so it's good. Anton Julian you've uh, come up to the States you're currently the shop manager and crew chief of Sarah Fisher Racing you and your brother are up here. Your brother we'll talk about later on. But first of all, I want to talk about Julian Racing and this little machine behind us here. What's that? Now that's a mini sprint. It's a 600cc, 636. It's a same as a TQ, which is in New Zealand, but the motor's offset. Uh, we just wanted to have a bit of fun when we were off. When I first moved over here, I, I would uh, race, do the race season over here, and then I would fly back and do the uh, dirt tracks over there at Stratford Speedway and hang out down there doing some uh, production saloon cars and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, we've been winning races and stuff. It's been really, it's been really good. It's, uh, you know, we can get away from this sort of scene and go out and hang out with uh, some guys at the dirt track and enjoy ourselves with the families. Your position here at Sarah Fisher Racing, it's a fairly heavy position. Where did you actually start in racing in the US? I actually started, uh, I finished my apprenticeship in New Zealand and then I just started as a front end guy. 
I'm working on an Indy Lights car with Kane from Hamilton, from uh, Palm Beach there. Um, he got me over here, and I just started on the front end and slowly worked my way up. How many years have you been over here now? I've been here 14 years now. What would you say to Kiwis trying to come up to the States now? Is it easier, more difficult than it was? I think it's a lot harder than what it used to be now that, you know, all the immigration stuff's going on. But, you know, if you want to come up, just keep pursuing it. You know, you never know what can happen. Not a bad one, mate. That's the way it goes. Though. That's racing, they say. I've been talking to Sarah and Andy for a while to try and come over here because uh, I like that small team, family atmosphere. You know, I wanted to have fun in racing again. Not saying that Andretti wasn't fun, it was just, it was a lot bigger and I wanted to enjoy it a lot more with another position. Yeah, I love it, it's great. Definitely staying here for a long time, so see what they've got for me here. But do you have aspirations to be team owner or anything would, like that? Yeah, I'd love to be a team owner, but at the moment with money and stuff. What would be the attraction for being a team owner? Sounds a risky business. Well, I'd like to have a New Zealand team, you know, with. Uh, New Zealand people working. There's enough people in the industry to have a full New Zealand team, so I think that's very attractive for me to to do that and uh, see where we end up. Have a New Zealand driver, all New Zealand people. I think we could go a long way with it. I think just by saying that on camera, you'll probably get a lot of applications very quickly. Yeah, well, <laughs> send them in. Make sure you got money with them too. <laughs>
corner weight you're running in the car. And I thought, I, I suppose I'll have to ask, what's corner weight? You know, what, what sort of stagger you got? What sort of tilt you got in the chassis? We didn't know any of those things, but I think being a Kiwi, you learn pretty quick. And um, so we skipped the next race at Atlanta. Indy was the race after that, and Bobby qualified quite well and won Rookie of the Year. And in that season, we won, I think, two races, one of which was an oval. So we picked it up pretty quick. Tasman Motorsports was a very famous name, but you chose to get out of that. Why did you sell or, or how did you get out of that? Well, well running a, a business like a race car team is pretty hard work. You've got to raise a lot of money every year, you know, 15 to $20 million. One of the other team owners wanted to buy Tony Canon's contract off me and uh, it ended up I sold the whole team to him. And um, the whole IRL thing really turned me off, um, not because it was IRL, just because a big sport was being driven apart by stupidity on team owners' parts. Now it's all back as one and it's great. Um, hopefully it'll keep on growing now. You choose to live half your life here and half in New Zealand, essentially. Is that a lifestyle that suits you? Um, we're lucky to be able to do it. We avoid winters with a passion. <laughs> so it's raining in New Zealand now probably and we're, we're here in summer. But um, no, New Zealand's you know where my roots are. It's one of my homes. People ask me, where's home? It's kind of where you're at, I think. And uh, I've lived um, over half my life in America. I really enjoy it. I'm an American citizen and a Kiwi citizen, so I'm lucky to be able to do both. And we've got a nice place on Waikiki Island and just love the summers down there. Well, we'll leave Steve Horn now and we go to Brownsburg, Indiana, where we talk with John Godfrey of Spike Midget Chassis. Then we talk with our special Kiwi in NASCAR, and that's Marcus Ambrose. All that coming up next on Still, Kiwis and Characters in Motorsport. Welcome back to Still Kiwis and Characters in Motorsport. Summer in New Zealand usually means family nights at the Speedway, so now in our business section I talk the business of Speedway with Kiwi John Godfrey. You had a very successful business with Stealth, but you changed to Spike. Why was that? Reason for that, Bob? We uh, had an opportunity to sell the Stealth factory. 1998 and we took that and we had some time off and a lot of our customers contacted us and wanted us to build cars again so here we are same employees and now we've got spike chassis there are many tracks around the usa we see them all over the place it must be a very big occupation to have sprint car and midget racing here yeah it's a really good market in the united states we send some to australia some to new zealand and, but mainly all over the united states but there are many tracks in this area. We've, we've been to a few smaller ones uh, and many tracks over the, over the whole of the USA. All your chassis are all over the, uh, the country. Yeah, they're everywhere. I mean, there's racetracks everywhere, as you know. I mean, there's hundreds of racetracks in America. How many cars does Spike sell per year? 140, 150 cars a year. And what, what's the market? How many new cars would be sold per year with all the chassis manufacturers? Um, Boy, it's probably a thousand, I would just be estimating, but roughly a thousand for dirt cars, dirt track cars. All our racing in New Zealand obviously is on the dirt, but here it's pavement and dirt. Are there big differences between the two sorts of car? Oh, it's a completely different car. I mean, going back 15 years, you'd run the same car on both series, but now it's a completely pavement car. It's a long, different wheelbase, lower, everything's different, offsets, everything, completely different unit. The market in the USA is always changing. Somebody's always coming out with a new little bit on the chassis. There's always a fashionable chassis. The turnover big, and what happens to the old ones? Oh, the old ones are still racing, just at a, at a different level or lower level or whatever you want to call it, you know. And do you manage to get big advances in the chassis, or is it just a tiny advance each season, each year, each five years? No, it's just, it's just we're, we're always trying to develop things. We work with a lot of different race teams, and motor manufacturers trying to always we're always trying to look for something new you know and what's the future now for the the spike chassis company it's going to be uh, get bigger and bigger presumably yeah onward and upward if we can what else are you going to be building apart from speedway chassis uh, we've got a daytona prototype project and 
of course we do sprint cars and we're going to start doing wing sprint cars again too like we did at Stell. So the future's looking good for you? Looking really good. Back to the West Coast and another iconic Kiwi name. Success in sport goes hand in hand with business for Kiwi Rod Miller. Well, you know, I think it, the, the company um, here in, in, in California was formed to chase my motorsports dreams. And, um, you know, as, as we, we, that journey went on with our rally cars, off-road and Pikes Peak and so on, you know, we started building up a, a crew of very talented people, engineers, fabricators, machinists, and so on. And, um, you know, I was always attracted to motorsports that were unique and different, so that building a better machine than our competitors was something that was always important. So we attracted all those skilled people to the company. And um, as years went on, then um, other folks wanted to, our engineering services and our, our other skills and capabilities that we'd, we'd built up to, to support, whether it be commercial opportunities or Department of Defense opportunities and so on. And what does Millen Works actually do? What's the purpose of the company? Well, it's essentially engineering services. So we design a lot of, um, in some cases, completely ground up vehicles. Um, for instance, the, the theme parks, the, the, the places like Universal Studios and Disney, we design and build complete um, vehicles for, for some of their rides. Um, we do it for the, the military, whether it be the Army or the Marine Corps or the Navy, we, we work in that space as well. So we can either design and build a, a completely armored vehicle from the ground up that has a lot of mobility. You know, keep in mind we've got a lot of experience in off-road racing, so we understand vehicle dynamics in an off-road terrain. Um, we even do vehicles up to 25, 30 tons nowadays with, with special active suspensions that um, we, we have an electronics group that works with our mechanical group and you know we, we can get more mobility out of vehicles than you could traditionally. And uh, so it's, it's actually still, it's not racing in some of those areas, still very exciting though. You visit New Zealand regularly, do you still call New Zealand home? It's perhaps New Zealand's now my second home. Um, you know, of course it was my home until I moved 30 odd years ago. Um, but, but all our kids are here. Uh, we've now got a couple of grandkids here. So, so I think California's our home, it's our base. Um, but we, we thoroughly enjoy spending the time we do in New Zealand. So there'll be perhaps a little more time spent down there uh, enjoying the fruits of what you're doing there. I, I can see that. We, in fact, you know, my wife and I, we can both see that ha happening in the future, yes. Millen's surely one of the most iconic names in New Zealand motorsport history, and in fact, in US history as well. One of the biggest forms of motorsport in the US is this, NASCAR. We're at the Michigan International Speedway for the big NASCAR meeting this weekend. And one of the guys trying to make his future in this sport is Marcus Ambrose. Not strictly a Kiwi, I hear you say, I know, but he did drive a Stone Brothers Racing Kiwi team. He did race in New Zealand often, in around Pukekohe, and he's a fantastic driver. I went one-on-one -on -one with Marcus Ambrose. Marcus, you've come from living in Tasmania, living in Australia, then the UK, and now the US, a hell of a lifestyle change, isn't it, for you? <laughs> yeah, it is, but I've always chased one dream, and that's just racing cars. And, uh, you know, if you want to race cars, NASCAR's the place to be. We race every weekend. Uh, I'm, I'm in a race car probably three to four days a week, on average. So, uh, you know, it's an intense lifestyle, but it's something that we've chosen. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a balance between family and racing. Uh, like all professional sports, you've got to try and find a good balance between personal life and, and professional life. But, you know, it's a, it's a good challenge for me. It's something that I never dreamed I'd be doing and I'm very privileged. New Zealand, world famous. Well, your passions really, I read, were um, dirt bike, the farm in southern Queensland. Can you do any of that here, the dirt bike riding? And certainly not the farm yeah. in southern Queensland. Well, the big bikes are really off, off limits now because you get hurt on those too easy and there's no weeks to recover. You know, you basically run the gauntlet. Is that a team rule? Uh, no, it's just a personal rule. You know, um, you've got to be ready every week and even a common cold, you're going to get a cold at some time during the season and it affects your performances because you race every single weekend. So you've got to look after yourself as best you can. But, uh, you know, I'm a, not an adrenaline junkie, but I like to do things that are action packed and 
you know, I'm on a mini bikes now and mountain climbing and and other bits and pieces. Not mountain climbing New Zealand style, <laughs> just uh, I guess mountain hiking here in the US. Well, you like to do things that are exciting, but also one of your passions is trout fishing. It is. I uh, yeah, I love I love the the rivers and streams. Trying to jump on a good trout, you know. Uh, I come from Tasmania originally, so we've got some of the nicest trout waters, trout fisheries in the world, just like New Zealand does. And, and so I, I have trouble finding those pristine waters here in the US, to be honest with you. But I enjoy getting out and just getting back to basics. You know, this racing life is intense. You're in front of 160,000 people every week. You're on national TV. Everything you do is scrutinised and looked at, and you're on, you know, you're basically on show. You know, when I get my own time, I like to basically just switch off and just get back to basics. <laughs> Marcus is a super chap. He brings a slightly different perspective to our form of racing. My experience here is probably a year or so short of Marcus's, in fact. But I, I certainly can relate to the way Marcus describes the cars. And in our team meetings, when we get together and the drivers are describing what they're feeling out there and how we can make the cars better, that different perspective that Marcus brings is often what we're looking for. I was sitting here just uh, in front of your motor coach, which really is an essential, the way you have to travel around the country and stay at tracks like this. Do your family travel with you as well? Do you have family? Yeah, I've got two little girls, uh, five and three uh, nearly now, and, and my wife and the kids come to probably about 15 races a year. We race about 38, so about a third of the season they come along. Uh, the motorhome pretty much goes on the road every single week, apart from the West Coast races, which is too far for it to travel. And, and it's a necessity, you've got to have your own stuff, your own computer connections, you've got to have your own sheets, your, your own pillows, you know. You think about, oh well you don't need it, but you know, when you run the lifestyle that we do, uh, I'm away more than I'm at home, and, and I'll probably spend you know, three to four nights a week in the motorhome and, and the rest back in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Don't be on the line. Talking about being away from home, you're away from Australia, in Tasmania, your home. So what, what are the things you miss by being over here? Well, you do miss home, you miss friends and family, and you miss a lifestyle. Australia and New Zealand, uh, you know, great countries, uh, great people, very relaxed, and we have a good work-life balance. You know, here, it's all work, work, work. So, you know, I, I miss the comforts of home, and especially with two little ones, you know, we don't have family around us, immediate family around us to help, so it's a bit of a challenge. But uh, like everything in life, you got to commit to things and, uh, and not everything's perfect. But you know, we, we enjoy our time here in America, it's not forever. Once I finish racing professionally, um, I'll go back to Australia, there's no doubt. Well, as our show winds down, you can see the fans behind me, they love NASCAR. Marcus Ambrose has clearly enjoyed his time in NASCAR so far. He's clearly enjoyed the whole lifestyle change for America. Everybody enjoys NASCAR. And on the next Still Kiwis and Characters in Motorsport, I meet a man who worked for the Andretti Green IndyCar team for a long time, who now is the proof that Kiwis can grow wings. And I also chat with New Zealand Motorsport Hall of Fame member and New Zealand Grand Prix legend, Dave McMillan, plus much, much more.